Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to write an offer in Transaction Desk. Now, this should only take about 10 minutes tops. The best thing is that um, you can use this video, pause it where you need to, fill out what you need to, and then come back to it, okay? I'm not going to teach you how to, sh to fill out the forms and everything. I'm just going to show you how to do Transaction Desk, okay? So the easiest way to get to Transaction Desk is from the actual listing. So this little button right here will take us to Transaction Desk. Now it will automatically create a transaction folder for just this house. Uh, go ahead and click continue there. Now when it pulls up the dashboard, you'll see that uh, there's the, the transaction dashboard uh, for just this house, right? So we definitely always want to use the wizard because that's a, that's the easiest way to do it, okay? So it pulls up this house with the address, and then it asks you if you want to use a template. Now, I have templates set up. So I'm going to use my purchase and sale template. Um, it's going to import the data straight from the MLS because that is where I created this from. So I will create this folder, okay? Now, when it gets done pulling up this folder, what I want you to realize is this is a transaction just for this home, okay? This button over here is a button for your dashboard for your entire transaction desk. We're just going to focus on this one house, all right? Now, that's important because when you go to signings, if you click on the signings button while you're in this transaction, it will just pull up the documents for that one. If you do it while you're at the other dashboard, it will pull up all the transaction, ask you which one you want to go into, and then go in from there. And it's just one more step, okay? Now, here's all the details. Verify that all the details are right. And then enter in how much you want to offer them. So let's say 400000 Don't ever push this button. Now, it's not a big deal if you push that button. Um, all it does is it takes you out of the wizard. So you only want to hit next. If for some reason you do get kicked out of the wizard, you push these three lines and then just go down the line. Okay, dashboard, details, contacts, forms, documents, signings. That's exactly what the, dash, the wizard is going to do for us. Okay, so if you do it, it's not a big deal. Okay. Now, click Next, pick your purchase date, so we're just going to pick today, pick when it's going to expire, we're going to pick today, we can't do mutual because we don't have that yet, okay, when it's going to close, just pick your closing date, All right, and then typically your possession is on your closing date, okay. Now, it's going to pop up with uh, my information automatically, the listing agents automatically, the sellers automatically, and our firms. What we need to do is add the buyers, so we're going to go over here and click Add, create new transaction and then buyers okay so we typically only put the buyers names in here because we don't want anybody else to have that information so we just click buyers and then save and then you'll see Joe buyer if you have another buyer just click another buyer and you're on your way now if you have three buyers you have to use an additional form okay now since I used my template Here's all my forms. These are the same forms that we use typically for every single transaction. So it's going to pop up this way for every transaction. If I want to add forms, I just click Add. And then I typically go to all statewide forms because that has all the forms in there. You can do a search if you want. <clears throat> I just pull up the one I want and I go. So just click on there and go. Okay. So it's a piece of cake. Now what you're going to do, you're not going to fill these out yet. You're just going to click Next. Next is going to pull up the documents. So these are great to have. Now this one is um, the listing agent added the 22K. So I can pull this up, see what they put on there, and they only put one thing on there. So um, I don't use these forms. I use the ones I created. I just want to put in whatever information they put on there. You can use this form if you want. The only difference is then I got to go in and I got to fill all this information out during in assign. I don't want to do that. 
Okay, the Form 17's there and the legal's there, so that's all good. All right, now this will take us to the dashboard for this transaction. I click Go to Forms, and then I start filling out the form. So I'll click on the Purchase and Sale. Now what's really nice about this is all the information on the top is automatically filled out. The address is there, and then you can just click what you need to add what you need to right check closing agent forfeiture the title insurance what's nice about going into transaction desk is that you can go into the back back and forth to the matrix okay so i look on here first american okay sounds good so i do first am now i would typically do the whole thing i'm just doing this for illustration purposes on closing, requested, sued by buyer, he is not, blah, blah, blah. Right, and then I'm going to list all the addendums. Okay. I did look to see if I needed the K. Okay, again, I'm just doing, I'm not doing this to show you how to write an offer. I'm just doing this to show you how to use transaction desk. Okay. So T and then 35. All right, so now out of habit, I always do file save, and then I do file exit. Sometimes the system gets hooked up in the exit and the auto save, and it doesn't save it, so you lost all of your um, all of your work that you just did on that form. Okay, now let's pretend I went through and filled out all the forms. Um, now, if I want to send this to my coach, what I do is I click all, and then I click the basket, and then I email it to my coach. If I want to print it out, I can do it all as a save as PDF. I can also print it all out, too. So there's a bunch of different ways to do this, right? Now, if I once I do all this and I fill out all the forms, then I'm going to click signings. Now you'll see there's none, so I'm going to add a signing, okay, and I'm going to call it whatever. We're going to call it test one, all right, okay, and then go to new signing. Now, since we're in this dashboard, it's going to pull up this dashboard's info, so simul sign, okay, and then the participants. Now I want to have my client sign, I'm going to sign it, and I'm going to have my client sign it because I added the 22J. Um, and then click add. Now you'll see Joe Buyer came up with a little hand. That's because I didn't add his information in, or his email in there. So Joe Buyer at buyer.com. I really should check and see if that's somebody's address. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to put this in there because sometimes it will kick you back if you don't. So I add those. Right now the little hand's gone. Now on the documents, it'll pull up all the documents that were in that folder. So I'm going to hit um, Format Documents. I'm going to not use their 22K, okay, Seller's Disclosure, and the Legal Description. All right, so it's going to pull up all the folders for all the files for that folder. It's going to start working on those. That was me having a drink of water, sorry. some dead time should I tell a joke <clears throat> why did the dog jump in the water because he didn't want to be a hot dog ah, that's funny it's one of my favorite jokes okay so I'm gonna look at all the forms make sure they're all there now you'll see that um, some of these have these little marks on there that means they are MLS forms and the signatures have already been placed on the form where they should go okay the signature block right so where the client needs to sign the ones that don't have that on, you're going to have to add those signatures on there. So what we'll do is we'll click Design. And this usually doesn't take very long, and I don't have any more jokes. That's the only joke I have. So there we go. Now, this is your last chance to look at these documents before you send them off to get them signed. It's a lot easier to fix them now than it is to fix them 
at any other time. If you need to fix them, you click back, save and continue, and then go back and, and redo the documents if you need to, okay? So let's assume they're all good. I'm going to make sure all the signature blocks are in the right spot. Um, now, if I need to change who's signing them, I'll click over here, and then Joe Byer is going to sign this. Um, so we just go through. Now on the 22K, remember as the listing agent, you need to sign those, and there's your signature. Okay, and then I, when I filled out the documents, I would have put in there any utilities they put on. All right, so we go all the way in. Here's the Form 17. So now Joe Byer needs to sign the Form 17. So I'm going to put that in the first one. I do drag and drop. Here's that. I click and hold. What happened there? Okay, click and hold. All right, then I add the date. Now it auto adds the date, but I add it just to be on the safe side. Now we need to initial the legal description, right? So I drag and drop. Okay, so I'm holding the drag, I'm holding the mouse button and dragging it over there, okay? Now this is all done. This is all ready to go. I just click next. I just click next and it will ask me. Now when this box pops up, I just automatically send these invitations. Um, and then what I will do from a secondary source, a text or an email directly from me saying, hey, Joe Byer, I just sent you um, an AuthentiSign to sign. The reason why I use a separate email or text is because sometimes this that email that was sent from the system will go into their junk and they will never see it. So I always do it from two different sources. All right. Now I can click on test one. And you'll see it sent me an email that says, hey, Paul, you need to sign this. When it comes in, I click it. It pulls up the two boxes. And it should do it rather quickly because I only have one signature. I'll say accept. I'll say start. Click my name. Complete signing. And then I'm done with that, right? So each one of the participants will get this. Now you'll see in a second, I'll get another email that says, hey, Paul uh, signed it. So you see AuthentiSign, Paul, Paul signed it. Now I can keep track of that right here. All I have to do is refresh my internet and you'll see that, uh, oh, it kicked me out, okay. Well, most of the time you can just refresh your internet and you're good to go. So any questions, that took 12 minutes, 12 minutes to complete, so describing everything, so it shouldn't take you much more than that to do the entire contract, okay? Thank you and have a good day.